Today we're going to learn how to create a stuffed pizza. But before we do, let's go over a little bit of the history of pizza. Pizza's been around for a very long time, and it's said that the ancient Greeks actually developed the concept of pizza by piling food on top of flat bread. But it was the Italians that began to add more toppings to the pizza, starting with one created for the Queen Margarita. To make it more Italian, the chef who created it used the colors of the Italian flag. For example, green was basil, red, tomato, and, of course, white was mozzarella. Pizza was then brought to the United States, where we put our own personal spin on it and enjoy it as we know it today. Many artists are inspired by things they see in their everyday lives, things in popular culture. These are called pop artist. British artist Lucy Sparrow is one such artist. She has created an entire convenience store with hand-stitched items of things you would see in an actual store. That's right, everything you see here is made with the same materials that you will be using to create your stuffed pizza. Felt, hand sewing, and maybe a little bit of puffy paint. Peter Anton is an American pop artist who creates giant sculptures of food. How perfect is this pizza for what we are about to create? You might be thinking that that is real. It is not. It's a sculpture. Peter loves to create a variety of foods as a part of his popular culture art exhibits, all based on different foods that we enjoy. So take a look at this pizza. Use it as your inspiration for your own stuffed pizza creation. Let's get started. To make your stuffed pizza, the first thing you're going to need to do is gather up your supplies. For this masterpiece, we are going to be using the following. We will be using felt. You'll need a lot of different colors to choose from for all the toppings of your pizza. You're going to be using a needle for your sewing. You'll want a needle that's sharp, on one end, but big enough at the eye or the opening for you to get your thread through. That means you'll also need thread, scissors, pins would be really helpful, but you don't have to have them, paper for making a pattern, and of course, more felt. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to create your pattern. When a person is sewing, they almost always work from a pattern. So our pattern is going to dictate the size of our slice of pizza. So let's go ahead and figure that out. I've already taken a piece of felt. I'm gonna make a small piece of pizza, one that's this size of the felt. Knowing that I wanted it this size, I traced a piece of paper and cut it out. That will help me make the correct size for my pizza. Now I don't want my pizza to get really small. I'm gonna try to keep it about the size of this paper. Something that's very tiny might be difficult for me to stuff. So let me just find the middle of this line segment, which is right here. And then I'm going to look at the top. I could keep it straight if I wanted to, but I know that the top of pizza is curved like an arc. So starting on one end, I'm just gonna draw an arc like a rainbow. And there we go. And now I'm going to connect my dots. I'm going from here down to there. And I'm going from here to there. Now I need to take my pattern and pin it to my piece of fabric. These pins are what's going to hold my pattern in place while I cut it out but I have a couple of choices to make. I need to decide, do I want to pin my pizza slice like this? If I do, that means I will be cutting around all three sides. I will end up with a front and a back to my stuffed creation. Or I have another choice. I could lay one long straight edge along this folded edge like that and pin it and cut only two sides. Now, if I do it that way, what that means is since I'm only cutting two sides, I will only need to sew two sides. So this will make it so that I don't have to do as much work. However, it limits you if you wanna add anything else. For example, I'm going to also be adding some silly arms to my pizza. I won't be able to do that if I 
go about cutting and sewing this way. So I'm going to do it both ways so that way you can decide which way you want to cut and sew your pizza. Let's do it the easier way first, the one that means less work, where you'll only be cutting and sewing two edges. When you're going, what you're going to do is you're going to pin your pattern to both pieces of fabric. What that means is your needle is going to need to go not only through your paper, but through both pieces of fabric like this. Notice I have one hand holding my pizza down. That way it's not moving when I'm trying to pin it holding it down, lifting it up. I'm going to take my pin, poke it through, watch out for fingers, poke it through all three things, the paper and the two pieces of felt. After you've got it poked through, bend everything down, poke it through again. In, bend everything down, poke it through again. There we go. I've got one pin in place. I'm going to hold it down right here now, all the way through, watch out for fingers, bend poke it through. Last one. I'm only going to put one pin in each corner. All right, let's see how I did. Now I can take my pins out, pulling it straight out, take off my pattern. And now I have my pizza cut out. Before I can move on to sewing, I need to make another pattern. This time, I'm going to be making a pattern for the stuffing of my pizza. That's right, I'm not using regular cotton stuffing. I'm using something flat that's called batting. And I'll need to cut that batting out to the right size for my pizza. It does need to be smaller than my pizza pattern, which by the way, it's always a great idea to label your patterns and keep them. In an envelope would be a great place. That way, if you ever want to make your same design again, you have all of your pattern pieces saved. So I'm going to go ahead and trace around my pizza pattern. And then I'm going to make this pattern for the batting the same but smaller. It's got to be smaller so that it can actually fit inside of my pizza. So now I'm just going to draw another line following that first one, just making it about, about the size of my finger, that much smaller. And this will be the size of my pizza stuffing or my batting. But it's a little tricky to cut this out. So once again, we're going to use those pins. Watch your fingers poking all the way through. Fold and poke all the way through. Boop, fold and poke. And I like to do just those three corners. And now I'm ready to put my stuffing inside of my pizza. So I'm just going to open it up. Place it inside. We want it a little bit smaller. That way it's easy for us to sew and fold it closed. It should be nice and squishy. Now, if you want your pizza even more nice and squishy, then you can just add more batting. If it's got too much, then just peel a layer out. I think mine felt pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and fold this back over. And now I need to stitch. Before I stitch, once again, I'm going to use those pins to hold it in place. Take a piece of paper and cut it into a very small rectangle. Once you've got that very small rectangle, fold it in half. Then you're going to see if it will fit in the eye or the opening of the needle. Let's get close to that needle, shall we? There we go, nice and close. Let's see if my folded piece of paper will fit in the opening or the eye of the needle. There we go, that's what we're looking for, and perfect fit. Now I have a needle threader. Set your needle down, open your needle threader. We're gonna call it a hot dog bun because it kind of resembles that, maybe a little bit. Take the end of your thread, and you're going to put it inside of that hot dog bun. Just make sure that there's no hot dog sticking out of your bun. Get out of here, hot dog. Back it up. There we go. Now I'm going to pinch the end of my yarn. 
my paper, and I'm going to slide it into that eye or opening. Keep on sliding it until, voila. Now we're going to need to knot the ends of the thread. So you're going to need to match up the two ends of thread, make the letter U, make the letter O, take those tails, put them inside of that O, and pull. Now you have a knot. I like to make a double knot. That's really going to make it so that when I'm sewing, my thread doesn't come flying out of whatever I'm stitching. So I'm just going to do that same thing again. Make the letter U and O. Take the tails, put them in the opening, and pull. I'm going to start at this end, and I'm making sure to start very close to this end because I don't want to start over here and have an opening in my pizza. So I'm going to start right here, and I'm doing something called a whip stitch. I'm going to start by coming through to the back, and I like to hold this up so that I can see that I'm going through both the back and the front of the fabric. I want to make sure that I go through both pieces of fabric. Push my needle in, pull it until the knot stops it, and go around. I'm whipping my needle around. That's why this is called a whip stitch. Pull until my knot stops it, and go around. Piece of cake. Now to take my needle and just slide it underneath my last stitch or a stitch that's really close by. So I've got my needle underneath a stitch. I'm going to pretend that my needle is like an airplane and my airplane is taking off from the airport very slowly but as it does it realizes it forgot a passenger, it forgot to go back and pick up the loop. So it does a U-turn mid-air and before that loop closes it goes inside of it and picks it up. Go ahead and pull, 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 pull until your knot stops it. Make sure you do that twice. So let's do it again. I'm going underneath that loop that I just did. There goes the airplane taking off. Oh, I forgot something. Do a U-turn in the sky, go back, pick up that loop, and done. Now that I've done that twice, I can go ahead and snip and I will cut my new piece of thread the same way I did before, use my needle threader to thread it, and get right back to stitching. When you cut out your sauce for your pizza, you might want to use your pizza stuffing pattern. It's a little bit smaller than the size of your pizza, and it will make it so that you can see a little bit of your crust. If you pin it along the straight edge, you'll end up saving quite a bit of your fabric. You might have noticed that sometimes I use a different pair of scissors. Those are my special fabric cutting scissors. So when you're ready, you can also start cutting out your toppings. For example, cut out some strips of fabric for your cheese. It doesn't have to be pretty or perfect. I mean, after all, it's just cheese. Once you've got them cut out into long strips, you can cut them a little bit smaller, laying them out as you go. The great part about doing this before you start gluing is you can simply take the felt pieces off to change your mind. For mushrooms, just create a curved line with two short horizontal lines going in, two verticals going down and close it up. Boom, you've got mushrooms, piece of cake. You can trace around that mushroom to make more. For things like, I don't know, green peppers, just start cutting some curves. You can make long pieces of green peppers like I did, or after you've got your curves cut, go ahead and cut those in half. Now, olives. For olives, I can just go ahead and cut out a circle. If it's difficult for you to cut out a circle, then simply trace around something that's round before cutting it out. Maybe something small like a coin would be perfect. 
After that, you could start to make some sardines or anchovies. It's totally up to you. Personally, I don't like those guys on my pizza, but they might be kind of fun to have. Start with a curved line, one going up, the other going down, and draw the tail for your fish. He's not alive with us anymore, so that's why I put a little X for his eye. And last but not least, we've got to have pepperoni. I'm just cutting out large circles for pepperoni shapes. Piece of cake. Hey, it's Mario's Italian Pizza. How may I help you? Uh, I would like to order a cheese pizza. Just cheese, nothing else. You know what, except for maybe some green peppers. Green peppers are good. You sprinkle some of those on there. You know what? Forget the green peppers. I forgot. I'm totally allergic to green peppers. What was I thinking? But anchovies and pepperoni would be great. And throw those green peppers on there. I'm going to live life dangerously. Why not? And some mushrooms. I love mushrooms. Could you please put mushrooms on there? Make sure they're evenly spaced, please. Thank you very much. And black olives. Yeah, I think that sounds great. Uh, you know what? Nah, let's scrap that. Get rid of those black olives. Those are kind of weird looking anyway. You know what? I don't think I want those mushrooms after all. And I am allergic to green peppers. So let's take those off. Get rid of the pepperoni and anchovies. Yeah, cheese pizza. That's what I want. Hey, cheese pizza it is. Uh, with everything else I decided to put on there. <laughs> Let's use some buttons on our pizza. I'm going to use these red buttons for pepperoni. The first thing I'm going to do is start at the back of my pizza and decide kind of in the area where I want the pepperoni button to go. So I'm going to start in the back. I think I want it to go right here, but I'm going to make sure my fingers moved out of the way. I'm going to poke my needle through. And while my needle is sticking up, I'm going to go ahead and slide the button down just like that. And then I'll pull my needle until my knot stops it. Pinch this, but make sure not to cover the hole. My needle went up one hole. Now I'm going to go down the other one. Pull all the way until it stops it. There we go. And now I've got it attached. I should probably try doing another stitch, but it can be a little tricky to find that same opening. Oopsie, I went into the wrong one. There we go. Doing it twice is probably best, but if you can only do it once, that's okay. Then just knot it on the back. So I'm going to turn it over and I'll do my airplane trick. This time it might be too tricky to get underneath that stitch so I could just pick up some of the fabric. Pull, capture the loop. Double knot is always best. Pull, and capture the loop. All right, I'm gonna work on adding more of my pepperoni now. Buttons you might have now. noticed that a lot of my toppings on my pizza are no longer moving around. That's because once I figured out where I wanted them to go, I used some white tacky glue to glue everything in place. From there, I stitched on my buttons. You could sew as many buttons as you like or not. But my favorite thing to use is puffy paint. You can use puffy paint to add things like more olives, or maybe some hot pepper flakes, or even some Parmesan cheese. It's totally up to you. Just have fun. That's all there is to it.